Welcome to this Apple Watch Getting Started tutorial series. As a prelude, all these tools just came out and are prone to change. If you're watching this series in the future, there's a reasonable chance that some little things have changed between me making this and you watching it. Don't fret. Where possible, there will be annotations with what's changed. Apple has a pretty good reputation when it comes to software between beta and final releases, but anything's possible. With that said, the first place you want to go is developer.apple.com slash watchkit. This is Apple's hub for all things watchkit. But as you can see, it's pretty thin right now. Just the essentials like interface types, apps, glances, and actionable notifications, as well as an introduction video that's typically Apple and its vagueness, but still useful to watch, although I'll cover everything it covers in this series. And finally, there are resources including the Human Interface Guide and a resource pack that includes Apple's special fonts and all these cool Photoshop designs. There's also some template projects and information on sharing code between your, your regular iOS app and your WatchKit extension. But right now, the only thing we need to worry about is here. Here's the information about the SDK that you need to develop WatchKit apps. This is also the first of many things that are likely to change in the future. So see what it says in your time and do that. But because I'm not in the future, I'm going to download Xcode 6.2 Beta. When you click this, you will need to put in an Apple ID with an active developer membership. If you don't have an Apple developer membership and Xcode 6.2 hasn't been released to the App Store, you will need to buy one to play with these tools. Although, even if you can't do this, the series is wor still worth watching. So while that's downloading, let's talk about the three kind of experience types that a user can have with your app on WatchKit. The smaller ones are glances and actionable notifications. Glances are quick little bits of read-overly timely information that you can display to your user. When they tap one of these, it opens your app with a deep link through to the certain piece of content that you want to show the user, depending of course on that glance. The second is actionable notifications. They're basically the same as the ones in iOS 8. They're notifications with buttons and uh, I think possibly text fields that can either call up your app with a certain place or run background tasks. The final experience is the full watch app. Now the most important thing to remember is that watch apps aren't full apps. They're just meant to be little extensions to your existing iOS app so that users can access their stuff without getting their phones out of their pockets. And because of this, there's two somewhat restrictive types of watch app interfaces. The first is the page-based interface. This interface is made up of a number of interface controllers that the user swipes between from left to right. Each view controller contains relevant information. The second is the less restrictive hierarchical interface. This is like what you would see when you're using a navigation controller in a regular iOS app. Me saying this is all very nice, but actually doing something would be better. That's what I'm going to do in the next episode of this series. We'll create an app and start setting up the interfaces and features. 